the law the law was passed during the Civil War and finished it several years after the Civil War. Before the two big companies, the Union Pacific and the Southern Pacific, and this is going to be the Union Pacific. Um, the Union Pacific hired a lot of Irish people. Um, if you have you ever seen Far and Away, the movie Far and Away, um, if I'm ever gone one day, I might show you that or something. It's um, Irish people were just replaceable, right? And they would build, at some time, they would build up to 10 miles of track a day. And they would literally work people to death. Um, there are scenes where they're blasting to get through mountains. They literally had to blast mountains away. And if it wasn't going to work, like they sent, a, they sent some dynamite in and it wasn't blasting, it wasn't going through, what would they do? They would send an Irish person in to go light it and run out. And if he died, who cares? <laughs> also, we're going to start seeing a lot of Chinese people come um, to work on the West Coast. California had a huge Chinese population started because of the Transcontinental Railroad. And you start to see some stereotypes develop with Irish people going this way and Chinese people going this way. right? So it wasn't uncommon to see, and sometimes if you see Western movies, You'll see like small pockets, if it's a good Western movie that's being accurate, you'll see pockets of Chinese people in those areas. It's because of the railroad industry. Um, other questions? Yes? Is there like a museum or something where the There's a lot of museums about this actually. Uh, but yeah, I, I haven't gone to it, but I'm almost positive it was a huge thing. And they actually put down a golden spike, the last spike. Um, <laughs> No, they took it out. I actually have been on a train from Chicago to Utah before. Um, when we went out to Utah, my family hasn't, I've never met, I hadn't met ever them, so I was 10, we went out to meet some family in Utah, and my dad wanted us to see it on train, so we took a train from Indianapolis to Chicago, and in Chicago, we were in a sleeping car going out to Utah, it was pretty awesome. Um, that's tell you about waking up in Nebraska and some kid's face was right here? Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you if you can travel by train, it's really cool. To sleep in a train is really neat because it kind of lulls you to sleep. It's kind of good, It's it's really easy to sleep. The food on a train is great. I told you the tiger do. All right. Um, other questions you have about the land up? The Morrow Land Act, Pacific Rail Act, Homestead Act. Um, these are some ways our government's going to be getting people going west. Okay, you straight on that. My army straight pants. The Union Pacific got a lot more done. Yeah, but they also didn't have to go through mountains like they did. That's true. So, if they were paid more, but they had one here? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the exact yardage was for each one of them. But yeah, I mean, if you ever to run a marathon, going straight up was a lot harder than going straight. Um, <laughs> I know a guy who ran the Pikes Peak Half Marathon, and it's 13 miles directly uphill at 11% grade. And that takes a lot longer than going straight. Did you ever run a treadmill before? Yeah. You ever put the you ever put the incline all the way up? The Pikes Peak incline was higher than the highest incline for 13 straight miles. Yeah. He was dry heaving by mile 10. How awesome is that? Right? Isn't that awesome? It's pretty awesome. The, the actual he lived the half marathon. The full marathon is you go up 13 miles. Then you turn right back around and you go down the hill. I'll just roll. Um, it's actually really, you know, run. it's hard to go downhill for a long time. It really hurts your body to go downhill um, for a long time. There's a, there's a marathon, I think, in South Dakota where the entire marathon is downhill. They start up at the top of a hill and they go downhill. That's awful. You my truck, I guess. Um, the marathon I was in the summer was in the Green Mountains in, um, in Vermont. And the last couple miles, I, it was so slow. It was a really slow marathon. One of the slowest marathons in the country. It's so hilly. And the last two of the last miles, I was just not making time. And like by the 24th mile, your body's already pretty pissed off at you. And so I was like, I can either be hurt going slow or hurt going fast. And I started running so fast, people were laughing at me because the hill was like this. I was like, Whoa! and I just started running really fast for two miles. Like people were just like giggling as I was going past and I was my wife was like weren't you scared you're gonna trip and fall and when you're running you don't think about it right all you think of is God I want to get there and but I was running and she told had I tripped I would have just kept on going um, I should have just gotten a barrel and gone down the, the you know, like the monkey or something 
Um, okay. Um, let's talk about uh, Lincoln and the Constitution. Lincoln had a very interesting relationship with the Constitution in the sense that he ignored it a lot. Um, a couple things the president did where he suspended civil liberties or ignored it. Like today, these would be like, this, these would like not just be impeachable offenses, these was like, we have a dictator type of offenses. But, and, and people didn't like it then, but Lincoln kind of got away with it because he was able to convince people he was right just long enough to get himself not impeached. Right? Um, he was really good at this. A couple of things he did. Uh, one, the blockade. The blockade, you have to have congressional approval to literally start a war. He started... Not the draft, but he started a volunteer, like after Fort Sumter, Congress was not in session. So he started getting people to fight a war without asking Congress. Congress eventually gave him the war, but he started this without Congress. When you volunteered, you volunteered for 90 days. That was the original volunteer amount. <laughs> He, without asking Congress, increased that to three years. That is a gigantic amount of power to say, nope, not three months, three years. Done, I said so. Um, two of my favorite things. One, he, he, um, he suspended habeas corpus. What's habeas corpus? You should be from government economics last year. You should remember this. Do the military thing, like you can't have the military That's martial law. Um, this, this, is, this, is in, this is what the Magna Carta was about. Habeas corpus was you cannot have someone arrested without them knowing why they've been arrested or facing trial. Remember that? Yeah. He would just have people arrested and they would just sit in jail. They, did not, they were not officially charged and they never were going to have a court hearing. They just went to jail. Eventually, after the war, they were like, oh, yes. Not very well. Um, just and hope for the best. There's, 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 no, there's, no, there's no I. There's no I. Yeah. I love you. I love you. And my favorite thing is he had what I'm going to call suggested voting. I told you about this, right? Yeah. So in 1862 or 4, what, I think 1862, this was in, um, actually in Maryland, you're right, he did declare martial law in Maryland without asking anybody. He just declared it. Um, because if you're Lincoln, where was Washington, D.C.? What two states is it in between? Maryland and, Maryland and Delaware. Virginia, oh, right? And Virginia is a what state? A Confederate state. And if Maryland, a border state, becomes a Confederate state, what's the problem for Lincoln? Then you don't have a capital. Your capital is literally surrounded by the enemy. So he declared martial law in parts of Maryland, but also in, in Missouri, when you went to go vote, you had to hold a piece of paper on your way to the vote, voting booth to say what party you were going to vote for, right? Whether you're voting for Lincoln's party or you're voting for the opposite party. And when you went to go vote, you walked down a line of bayoneted soldiers and you were holding a card saying, I'm voting for your president, I'm voting against your president. Do you think there was a little bit of uh, changing of the mind sometimes? Yes. You can't be persuaded at gunpoint to vote for somebody. But Lincoln did all of this stuff, and his argument was it was better for the country. In the end, what's better for the country? For me to ignore some civil liberties, or for the country to be broken apart? What's better? Ignore the liberties. Broken apart better. Maybe long term, but look at William Lloyd Garrison. William Lloyd Garrison wanted to break apart. If the North does leave, and like, you know what, South, go screw yourself, what's the problem? We don't have any agricultural like, cotton and stuff like Well, we can get cotton. We can buy from them. What's the bigger problem? There's still slavery, right? There's still going to be slavery. 
I wonder, I mean, think about this. How long would slavery have gone on in the South if the South did not, if there was no war? If we would just let them go? I mean, last Thursday? I mean, when, when would slavery end? Last Thursday? When it becomes obsolete. And maybe. But think about this. Think about women's rights. Women's rights in the South is a relatively new thing, and the rest of the country had really, really pushed it. The South is always the last place to extend rights. All right. Okie dokie. Um, he called that voting, by the way, supervised voting. Um, although I will say, for the most part, he actually did he could have suspended more liberties than he did. Yeah. Did George Bush suspend some liberties during after the attack 9-11? Yeah. yeah. In fact, if President Obama ran criticizing some of those liberties that were taken away, and since he's become president, has kept doing some of the same things that he criticized George Bush for. Uh, okay, questions so far? Okay, I want to show you guys some uh, picture pages time real fast. You pay to do love pictures and maps, don't you? Yeah. Uh, Hallie, what's the number on that? 1137. Okay, why don't you go ahead and stop it? Start.